One may ask, how can a sandbox MMO be more intense than a first-person shooter or a real-time strategy game used for professional esports like StarCraft or Dota? After all, such games do have a practically infinite combination of moves and strategies. They're like chess games on steroids. EVE Online is not what one would call a pure strategy game like chess or even StarCraft or Dota 2 because it is a sandbox where any player, if they so choose and do face the consequences, could attack another player anywhere and any time they undock their spaceship. EVE is holistic, as the success of the attack depends on a huge number of factors. These factors may include your supply and wealth, the environment, your skill, their skill, your ship, fitting your ship, and even the time of day. If you are, say, in the United States, and you attack someone who's asleep at the keyboard from the UK, well, your chances of success go way up. In this way, EVE is less like chess and more like poker. Success depends on your ability to understand human nature, your own nature, the complex details of the game, and often pure luck. This is why when you pull off a hard-fought win in EVE, it is some of the most fulfilling and satisfying moments you can have in any game. I'm going to outline what makes each of these eight types of PvP intense, I'm going to start with the least intense and perhaps also the least respected and skillful types of PvP and work up to the most intense styles of PvP. This is based on my experience and having played only for about six years, I'm still a noob when it comes to some things. Every part of EVE in some way eventually comes down to PvP. Some way, somehow, you're going to compete with someone, but I'm going to focus only on ship-to-ship -ship combat for this video. At the end, I'm going to shamelessly plug my PvP corporation Interstellar Booty Hunters. So the eight most intense types of PvP from least to greatest are number eight, suicide ganking. High sec or high security, yeah right, is protected by the big brother who watches all capsuleers, Concord. The security status designations for each systems are from 1.0 for most secure to 0.5 for less secure. But in all of those types of systems, Concord patrols, unless the security status is 0.4 or lower. If you attack anyone without provocation in these systems, Concord will fly in like the valiant White Knight cavalry that they are, and utterly destroy you with their unreasonably overpowered ships. Sounds like a powerful guardian, right? Well, in 0.5 security systems, even though it's still considered high sec, it can take Concord as much as about 10 seconds to arrive. In most cases, that's plenty of time for a high DPS attacker to destroy some poor soul's mining barge. Of course, the attacker loses their high DPS ship, but it doesn't matter if the attacker's ship is dirt cheap and the victim ship is not. Now, suicide ganking miners in and of itself is not that hard or exciting for most after about the fourth or fifth success. Some gankers enforce a mining permit, such as organizations like Code, but this is meant mostly in jest. A step up from this is suicide ganking haulers or freighters. Freighters and EVE are massive capital ships that often carry lots of good loot. But you have to find someone who's piloting the thing and worth suicide ganking, plus it requires a pack to do right. The shiny loot that drops is often many times the worth of the attacker's ship, such as a Talos or Tornado. Also, ganking missioners is another option. Some players bling out their missioning battleships with all kinds of expensive modules to help them complete their missions more quickly. A determined pack of gankers are capable of scanning these ships, rallying the forces, and blasting it for the shiny loot. I must note that finding such a target takes time and patience. Personally, I do not have the time and patience for this. But I will say that I can respect the effort it takes and applaud those who have graduated from mere minor ganking. 7. The Fleet Blob Grunt in Nullsec, far from high security, massive fleets consisting of hundreds or even thousands of players clash over stations or territory. Fleets of this size, which I would categorize as about 50 or more, are referred to as blobs or blobbing. Sounds intense, right? Well, it is. But kind of like minor ganking, once you've been on about five or six of these big fleets and accustomed to the spectacle of it all, you've pretty much had the experience. Why? Well, since you are only one of many, your main function is to shoot at what you're told to shoot at and stay anchored on or near your designated fleet commander. This is all made easy with target broadcasting. Now, as always, there are some caveats. Some of these huge battles are historic in all of gaming history, and it is nice to say that you were there when such and such incident went down. If you have some form of leadership role in these fleets, such as a squadron leader of the scout wing, 
support or logi wing, or even fleet commander, your job becomes incredibly intense. In fact, for the leaders of these fleets, it may be some of the most intense PvP in EVE, since hundreds of pilots are depending on what you do. But the job of the mainline DPS is simply to follow orders and shoot. Number 6. Structure Bashing It's a hard job, but it has to be done. Someone has put up a citadel or some kind of station. It's in the way. It has to be taken down. Player-owned structures in EVE are massive, tanky things that can take hours, days, or even weeks to destroy. The more firepower you can bring, the easier and quicker the process. However, during this process, you're usually a static target and vulnerable to a number of people who could take some time to counter whatever it is you're flying. There is no real flying skill to structure bashing. The skill comes from leadership regarding choosing the right structure to bash while being ready to deal with any potential defenders. Structure bashing does lead to other forms of more interesting content, however. Number 5. Camping Camping in EVE is often the bread and butter of many PvP groups. This usually refers to gate camping. This means sitting on a stargate, hopefully one that is heavily trafficked, and blasting almost everything that comes through it. This is typically done in low sec, but if you're a mercenary or war decking corp, in high sec this is done quite frequently. In null sec, camping almost always revolves around the warp bubble. Since these are not allowed in low sec or high sec, they are handy to prevent warping out near gates. There are entire corporations or alliances that are committed exclusively to gate camping. Other forms of camping include station camping, where you set up on a busy station and blast people who are engageable, and also site camping. This is where you sit in a cloaky ship near a valuable PvE site and wait for the poor saw who comes to run it. This takes balls and patience, and I respect that. In fact, I respect most campers. This form of PvP can make ISK in the same way that freighter and hauler ganking can. The problem with camping is, well, it's camping. You're not moving very much, and everything you do is laid bare for all to see. People will study what you do and devise ways to disrupt your camp, and quite often, it's after you're already chilling with a beer or two or three, growing complacent, but when the Marauder shows up, or the Sino is lit that brings in the capital ships, among other things, you're caught flat-footed, all due to your laziness. However, I'm not above camping myself, I just don't like to be responsible for what happens while camping. Number 4. Baiting Baiting is a huge part of EVE PvP, and it's done in some form in all types of space. It is simply making yourself look vulnerable and engageable near an aggressive target, and when said target attacks you, you attack and destroy them in turn. Usually this means you have some hidden advantage. In high sec, perhaps you're able to bait someone who's not great at PvP by stealing their loot. Perhaps you sit while in suspect mode or flashy yellow, meaning you're not quite guilty enough for Concord to attack you, but free to be engaged by other players near a station. When you're attacked as a suspect, you're free to defend yourself, and you quickly reship into a stronger ship at the station, undock, and destroy the attacker. In low sec or null sec, perhaps you have a Sino generator installed in your ship. I frown on this, because all it takes is a quick look at a pilot's kill mail history on Z-Kill to make this determination. No one will engage you when they all know you have three guys in carriers waiting to bridge into your Sino and destroy the attackers. But perhaps you are mining in low sec or null sec in a mining barge, equipped with a warp scrambler so your buddies can come in and kill any attackers. There is baiting of baiters, and even baiting the bait killers back. It sometimes gets quite ridiculous, as it often seems like everything is bait and everything is a trap. This is an example of the extensive mind games that can be played in EVE. You just can't get that in most other games. Number 3. Cloaky Hunting This form of PvP can be very thrilling. If you have a ship with a Kovops cloak, such as a Stealth Bomber or a Stratios, you can warp and move almost anywhere without being seen or caught. You can look for people who are running PvE in low sec or null sec. Perhaps they're exploring or just running sites. You can either camp a valuable site or actively hunt down these people. You position yourself carefully, and at the right moment, you decloak and grab them with a warp scrambler, often causing them to jump with terror. This is very intense, but can require a lot of time and patience. It's usually well respected amongst the EVE PvP community, but hated by the victims who never see you coming. Number 2. Solo Roaming This is often the most respected, and very close to the most intense PvP available in EVE. You are all alone. You roam around looking for the right ships to engage based on your ship's capability and your flying style. This is perhaps the very best way to learn flying skills in EVE. The most elite solo roamers know the ships they fly extremely well. 
Some fly on the cheap and are aggressive underdogs just looking for a good fight. Others are extremely elitist and bling their ships out. Solo PvP is usually an underdog's game. You are probably a pretty good EVE player if you're winning more than half of your fights while solo roaming, since most people have a friend or two, or a hundred, and many choose not to engage you at all, making for a boring roam. But when you do get that good fight, that great engagement that teaches you about your ship, your flying skills, and allows you to tell the tale to your friends, this is extremely satisfying. Number one, small gang roaming. I consider small gang roaming to be the most intense form of PvP. It doesn't always earn you the great isk that something like gate camping or hauler ganking would, but still, a small gang can consist of anywhere from two to about a dozen of your friends. I've found that having just one friend for backup can increase a solo pilot's success rate by three or more times. Each good pilot on your side is an efficiency multiplier. There are some stark differences from solo PvP to micro gang PvP and small gang PvP. Granted, the smaller your gangs, the less fights you can take and ultimately win, but the more each person counts and the more intense the gameplay. The sweet spot of small gang PvP is between two factors. The first factor is the gang size, and the other factor is winning rate. Larger gangs win more. But at what point does the gang become so large that it's not as fulfilling? If your gang is still small, your actions count more, and if you win most of the time with the smaller gang, you are having a ball. This is why I'm absolutely convinced that small gang PvP is the most intense and ultimately the most fun. And now for a shameless plug. If you're into small gang PvP or thinking about getting into it, our low sec corp is recruiting. Interstellar booty hunters flies in gangs of 4-7 to seven people, but I'm looking to increase that number to 6 to 12 on a regular basis. For this, we must gain about 10 to 15 new members. We're a fun community of pilots who are all close. I will require that your player have at least about 4 million skill points, no alpha players for now, and that you're willing to learn new things. Other than following fleet orders, we have few rules or requirements. The name of the corporation, Interstellar Booty Hunters, is in the description below. Email the CEO in-game, or visit our public in-game channel. Thanks for watching Space Friends. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash resurrected. If you PvP and Eve, good hunting, and maybe I'll see you out there. Sailor, what would we do with the drunken sailor? Sailor, what would we do with the drunken sailor? Lie in the morning. Shave his belly with a rust. Rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Early in the morning. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll be. That'll be.